You're going to love this. We're going to take a virtual trip to Italy with Ashley Turney. Thank you so much for being Thank on. Thank you for having me. You started a company because you just love Italy. I can't get enough of it, and so I did. Lesberta. Correct. Which means? The expert. The expert, okay, which you are. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of things to go through, but what I want to ask you first is, you're not Italian. No. You ended up in Italy in what, 1990 or so? In 1990 for the first time, and, speaking not a word of the language. And what were you doing over there, going to school? I was on the Trinity College summer program. Okay, and, and what happened to you that changed your life? Um, I think I was really transformed. I, I had never experienced anything like Rome. I stepped foot in the, in the city and I thought, this is just the eternal city, so right? alive. Yes. And so alive, and everywhere you looked, there was some little piece of history, something fascinating to look at. And it was just, it completely consumed me. And I, from that moment on, I said, I want to dedicate my studies and um, my life to things Italian. And so I did. <laughs> so you started this business where you help put trips together for people. And what I love about what you're doing is you're getting off the beaten path. Yes, you can go to Rome and you can see the Colosseum and you can see all these awesome ruins, but there are so many things that people don't see. When did you develop the idea to do this? Well, I did, um, after I graduated from Trinity, I worked for elder hostel programs through Trinity College. So I was a group leader for educational tours for senior citizens. And so I led groups of 42 people around Italy. Um, and I wanted to do something a little smaller, something more personal, something that really, because um, there's something in Italy for everyone. And it might not be the history and it might not be the art. Um, I have a client going on Thursday to test drive a Ferrari. Um, of course you, know. you do. <laughs> oh so, you wow. know, there, I wanted to do those really unique things that you can't do with a group of 42. So with a family or a couple, you can do these really unique things, stay in fabulous little tiny hotels, eat in these little mom and pop restaurants. And that's the true heart of Italy. And that's where you really feel like you're a part of the culture. So sometimes you go with these folks and sometimes you you just send them on their way. Yes, most of my trips are just, I design the trip and I put all the details together. So from the time they arrive at the airport, they're met at the airport by a driver, um, guides come to their hotels to meet them, the hotels are booked, everything's taken care of, but it's their own trip. It's a family trip or a couple or a group of friends. And you recommend starting that nine months to a year before you're gonna take the trip, correct? That's ideal, yeah. yes. Nine months to a year is ideal. Um, I have done trips as quickly as a, a three-day turnaround. <laughs> if I said to you, I've been to Italy a million times, and I haven't been, I've been there twice, um, but I wanna see Italy in a way that nobody's seen it before. How would you start planning that trip? What would you do? Well, I've, um, I've actually been experiencing, experiencing some new places recently that I've completely fell in love with. I mean, I've been going to Italy since 1990, and can you believe it? This year and the year before, I went to places that I had never been. And that I was, you know, you think you've gone so many times, I go a couple times a year, that nothing would be new. But that's the magic of it, is it is Give new. Give me a gem of something you just um, found. At Piedmont up in the northwest corner where Torino is, where the Olympics were. Well, the area around that is the most magnificent wine country that you have ever seen. I'm listening with, now. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the Italian Alps in the background. So you're seeing vineyards and then snow-capped mountains. And it is, I mean, it is magical. And there are a lot of young people who are starting tourism initiatives. And uh -huh. so they're breathing a lot of energy into that into that region and it's fantastic. So if I want a trip, you can build in a cucina for me, um, maybe go to somebody's house that you know, because you know a lot of people there now. I know a lot of people there now. Um, I know my guides personally, I know my drivers personally. Um, I've, and I mean, that's Italy, is the connections and the relationships, so it's very important. Um, and that's what sets the trip apart, sure. I think. Do you speak Italian now? I'm fluent in Italian. You're fluent in Italian. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. All right. So you brought tons of little goodies that I love. Um, you, you brought a cheese plate here. Yes. These are all Italian cheeses from um, Fromage and Old Saybrook. 
and she does, she has the the best selection of Italian cheeses. So there's a truffle cheese there. Um, there's a taleggio. Um, there's a goat's milk cheese and a sheep's milk cheese, and there and some fresh figs, which are right coming into season right now, which is a, a very very Italian thing to eat: prosciutto and and fresh figs. You can't go to Italy and not eat it, right? No, this no. is a, this is a food trip. <laughs> exactly. Two cookbooks. Yep. Which did you buy them over there, or did you get them um, here? These were this one was gifted to me. Um, it is a woman who lives in Venice, uh -huh. and she paired um, her dishes with um, the glass of Murano, different plates of glass in Murano. So each wow. dish is in a different um, plate. Oh my gosh, of Murano. Oh. Of Murano glass. So it's really a, a, a gorgeous cookbook as well as some really fantastic Venetian recipes. Oh my gosh, and we'll see, we'll see the glass in just a second. This, this woman one? is um, an American who lives in Rome and she, I think, has the best handle on true Roman cuisine. And what is true Roman cuisine? Well, I mean, Italian cuisine in general is really very simple. I had a, a Tuscan a gentleman tell me one time that a Tuscan recipe should never have more than four ingredients. I love that. But that the quality of the ingredients has to be superior. And fresh. that's, yes. Very fresh. Right. All right, this is, of course, biscotti. Yes. And she makes these herself. <laughs> what, what goes into these biscotti? Um, well, these are orange and chocolate chip. They're my daughter's favorite. Um, I also do um, variations like a peppermint stick and chocolate chip at Christmas time. Um, I do a very traditional almond biscotti. Um, there's one that comes from the Jewish ghetto in Rome that's almond and cinnamon, which is really oh, interesting. Oh Did you bring the recipes back from Italy then? Um, I've gathered them from yeah. different places, yeah. What have you not gathered from that country that you still want? Uh, a house? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a villa? A villa. A villa? <laughs> All right, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is this? This is called a cuckoo, and it's from the, um, the town of Matera in Basilicata, which is in southern Italy, uh, a very um, poor area uh -huh. of the country. But this is their um, traditional terracotta that they make, and it is a symbol of fertility and uh, prosperity. And, and it's, it's a whistle. It's a whistle, yeah. and it's gifted um, for birthday, I mean, um, weddings or um, Childbirths and that type of thing. Um, we have some linens. Where are these from? They're these beautiful. are from um, the region of Romagna, Emilia Romagna, but Romagna is on the east coast of Italy, which is not as well known to Americans as the west coast, uh -huh. which is where the, you know, the Amalfi coast is. Right, which is, is a lot of folks go there. Oh, sure. This is the east coast, and they hand stamp all of these linens. They <sighs> cut their own stamps out of wood. And they hand stamp these, and I just think they're they're absolutely beautiful. And it's a pomegranate, which is a very popular um, fruit or symbol in Italy in general. This is the Murano glass that you talked about. These are yeah. rings that you that you yeah, bought. Yeah, these are just little trinkets I bring home to my Other friends. Glass. They're you know, <laughs> they're a nice little thing. Um, different glass, different shadings, and. They're pretty, just a little accent. This is from Florence. Correct. And my daughter studied, my twin daughter studied in Florence, as I was telling you. And I have been to this, I think they call it an apothecary? Yes. So tell me about this perfume. So this is um, actually a room spray from this um, pharmacy of Santa Maria Novella. And it was founded by the Dominican brothers in the 14th century. So and where they would make, they had these beautiful apothecary jars that were ceramic. Um, and they would make different um, cures and essences for health purposes. And they've maintained the, um, the pharmacy, and now they sell lotions and perfumes and, and, all, and also health AIDS, um, but I mean, you walk in, I'm sure you remember, because the smell is intoxicating it, when you walk in. It is, in. and I think, is it the oldest in Europe or it in is. the world? It's well, the oldest in Europe, I'm, I'm yeah. certain, yes. That's a, and it's, it's an amazing place. Um, here's a little garment, a scarf. Tell me about that. This is from, it actually looks like a fishing net, which is interesting because it's from the island of Burano, one of the islands of Venice. And they are known. I didn't for even know there were islands off of Venice. That's well, like, Venice is made all of islands. I've That's all get over it is. There. Yeah, you do. <laughs> 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 hundreds of islands, actually. And um, Burano is a, a fishing village, but they're also known for their lace production. Beautiful. And so that came from there. Here we have a tile. That's the um, the um, prayer of Saint Francis, Pace Bene, yeah. or Pax et Bonum in, in Latin, which is peace and goodness. 
and it's just something that every Umbrian or a, a person in Assisi has in their house somewhere is that little tile. Very cool. All right, now Brisecco. You can't well, go to Italy and not have that. Th yeah, that's. I mean, that's what. <laughs> that's what, what I do. bring home and what yeah. um, you know. I, not so much anymore. But when I first started going to Italy, Prosecco was very difficult to find in the U.S. So I would bring it home to my friends, and they would be delighted. It was a nice little gift for them. Um, same with the cheese. My kids always ask me to bring cheese home, so we get the vacuum packed cheese and bring that home, and uh, it's a nice gift. And then the dishes, the um, pottery. Yep, yeah, the pottery, which is different. In, this one's from um, Orvieto, but they're different everywhere you go. The, the designs are a little different. There's pottery down in Vietri Sul Mare in, on the Amalfi Coast, um, and in um, various places throughout Italy they're known for their pottery this happens to be um, a town in Umbria and I've been there many times my daughter has coffee mugs that she has at college um, that the woman who owns the store where we bought them still remembers her when I go back she says oh how's Aww. your daughter and it's just the nicest thing that we went one time when she was 11 years old and now she's 20 and this woman still remembers her <laughs> now the connections that you made that you told me about you can call up a driver or you can call up a guide that will give the tour that the folks want. So you, you've got guides all over the country now? I do. I do. Yeah. And, and that I, took and I, years. And I it did take years and I continue to meet people. I continue to make connections um, just by traveling to new places. Um, I was in um, Puglia last year, which is a very popular place now to go. It's in the uh, in the heel of the boot on the um, southeastern coast of mm -hmm. Italy, and um, it's a, an absolutely magnificent place that I hadn't spent much time in. And I mean, they have 900-year-old olive trees and the most fantastic produce, and um, that's where Albero Bello is, which is the town that has the little tiny white houses, cone-shaped houses, and it's just so unique. And so, I mean, and that's completely different from Rome or Florence or Tuscany or anywhere that a lot of people have been, so it's definitely worth a visit. This is going to be, I know, really a crazy question, but if you had to pick one place, because the whole country is amazing, give me a place that people don't know about that probably is gonna be popular, but the crowds don't know about it yet. Um, I think Piedmont is um, up and coming, honestly. That's one place that I think a lot of people are gonna start discovering, especially I think if you're interested in food and wine, uh -huh. um, because it is it was where the slow food movement started, was in uh, the region of Piedmont, and there's just this huge appreciation for fresh, um, local, you know, farm to table food. And that's and northern Italy? Northwestern. Okay. And not very far from um, the Ligurian coast. So you can go over the mountains to the Ligurian coast right from there and get to Cinque Terre, you know, the, oh, sure. the, the fishing villages that are connected by hiking trails. Yeah. So I think that's a really interesting place. I personally love the region of Umbria and I think I, people know about it, but I don't think everyone knows about it and it's a lot like Tuscany without the crowds and uh, which there, is great. yeah and there are some just absolutely magnificent little towns Orvieto, Assisi, Todi, I gotta write all these Spello. down. <laughs> oh I mean they're just they're fantastic and they're just little villages exactly what you imagine with these stunning views of the land of the countryside all around you and it's a nice pace. Montefalco is another great town in Umbria. What is the best time to go to Italy? You know, I would say September, but are there other months? Is October better? Um, well, it definitely wasn't July this year when it was 104 degrees. Yeah, right. <laughs> they had a real heat spell. Um, I would avoid summer anyway. Because if August you can. is when they vacation. Correct? August is when Italy. they vacation, and so you, if you're going to a lot of the towns, you're not getting a true feel. You're uh -huh. getting a lot of tourists going around and not necessarily... Um, the Italians. Uh -huh. Some people don't have a choice, so certainly sure. you can make it work if you have to go then. Um, I'd say October. September is still busy. Yeah. October, it starts to quiet down, and it's fantastic. It's did, did you read the book Under the Tuscan Sun? I did. And how true is that? Um, she had a really um, good take on the... Um, the way the rhythm of life mm -hmm. in Italy and the way they live and they eat seasonally and they you know they they 
market every day because going to the market is a social event. It's not that you're going to get food. You're going to ask the, the fishmonger how his wife is and you're going to check in with the people at the bakery and the people at the fruit stand. So it's something you do as part of your social life and that's very important and I hope that never goes away in Italy. <laughs> This might be a crazy question for you, but do you go anywhere besides Italy or always back to Italy when you travel? Well, I, I go to Italy for work uh, uh -huh. a couple times a year, and um, we were just in Ireland with my family because our nephew got married in Ireland, so we had the chance to go, and I had never been to Ireland, uh -huh. so I had a fantastic time. It's nice to see it, but I planned it like I planned my trips to Italy. <laughs> Does the government, does, does the Italian government know about you and, and do they help you in, in planning at all any of your tours? Um, I don't think the government knows about me. I, and that might be. I mean, it's a good thing. I <laughs> no, no. Um, I think there's some tourist offices uh -huh. that I have made really great connections with. I had um, the tourist office up in a town of Brescia in northern Italy. Um, I connected with them at a travel show one year. And um, they invited us to come to see the Mille Miglia, which is this 1,000-mile classic car rally that goes from Brescia wow. to Rome and back. And they hosted us for four days, and it was just an unbelievable experience, especially for people who are car aficionados. It was amazing. So that was unique. And, you know, these smaller towns or lesser-known towns, not Rome, not Florence, not Venice, but they're really looking for people to... Um, promote their areas and they roll out the red carpet and they'll do anything they can to help you make that happen. So um, I was inv invited to a blogging event in Romagna and I went with bloggers and they kind of introduced us to their whole region and it was fantastic because it was a whole new experience for me. When you look back on all that you have developed in Italy over 20 some years. You must be pretty proud of this. Yeah, I am very proud of it. I'm very proud. I'm very proud when people come back from Italy and say we had the most extraordinary experience thanks to you. And that makes me really happy because I want everyone to love Italy as much as I love Italy. Which you are <laughs> just possessed of. I am. Which is a really good thing. <laughs> Can you remember a trip that you planned that you thought was just amazing and and if you remember what what was involved in it something that wasn't ordinary um, well I actually planned a trip for a woman who called me and said very urgently that she needed to go because she had cancer oh my and gosh. she wanted it was her dream to go and so I went I, I, I made all the plans she needed a wheelchair because she was pretty weak at the time and so I made every arrangement for her that she could do everything she wanted to do and they ended up coming home early because she wasn't well and she passed away I think two weeks after they came home and her husband told me that she had the trip of her life it was exactly what she wanted and that made me really happy was she Italian no she no. just she wanted to see the David in Florence huh. that was her and and we got her there and he said it was she was beside herself with joy at that moment. Wow. That was really You'll cool. never forget that. No, I'll never forget that. Well, Ashley Turney, thank you so much for bringing us Italy. <laughs> um, before we go, though, we, I just want to show a video of some of the things that you can see on her trip.
right, we save that to the end because we know all of you want to get on board a plane right now. Nothing to, li nothing not to like. Thank you so much Thank for, you for having us, me. Italy, and uh, I hope to travel with you someday. I hope you do. It'll be awesome. I'm ready. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. Spend all night kissing and it walks right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find us a witch and a call the keys of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of a mind. Just the same time, skip right ahead to the last ride.